A gamer's worst nightmare. Is it microtransactions in your favorite game? Maybe it's Nintendo going out of business. Well, those are a few examples, but probably the biggest example of a gamer's worst nightmare is when a game gets canceled. When a game gets canceled, that normally means that we're never going to see what that project ever turned out to be, let alone even see any kind of assets related to that game, and Star Fox is no exception. From games that got canceled that everyone knows about, to games that got canceled that no one talks about, Star Fox is no stranger to canceled projects, and that's what today is all about. So strap in and get ready to set your G-Diffuse to max, because it's time for us to warp straight into the canceled games of Star Fox. So without further ado, let's rock and roll. Let's start off with the most well-known canceled Star Fox game ever made, Star Fox 2. Star Fox 2, which many of you probably already know, is the direct sequel to the SNES Star Fox 1. Star Fox 2 saw tons of press release and had tons of different versions, all the way from the April 15th, 1994 build, all the way up to June 22nd, 1995 build. Now, as most of us know, Star Fox 2 became infamous for the fact that it was right at the end of development before it got canned in favor of Star Fox 64. Now, eventually, Star Fox 2 did get a full release in 2017 on the SNES Mini. However, the final version we got is actually actually not the final version that was originally planned. You see, when Star Fox 2 actually got canned, Nintendo still wanted Star Fox 2 to finish development. Now, after the game finished development in 1995, the game was sent off for testing. Now, way later down the road, Cuthbert, one of the original developers of Star Fox 1 and Star Fox 2, who also was working on Star Fox Command at the time, actually received the only official cartridge version of Star Fox 2, which was used as inspiration for Star Fox Command. This specific version that he received received actually is slightly different than the version that we got in 2017. Though we don't actually know the differences between the version that we got and the final official version that Cuthbert got, we do know for a fact that there were differences between the two. Though we may never get to see this alternative final version of Star Fox 2, nor will we probably ever get to see what this cartridge even looks like, we at least do have a final finished version of Star Fox 2 for all of us to enjoy, as well as reproduction cartridges which do a pretty damn good job at replicating what Star Fox 2 probably would have looked like like if it did get a release on cartridge form. But the truth of the matter is, is that Star Fox 2 did get canceled, and there is an official cartridge and final version released pre-2017 that we never got to see. The next project on this list is one that's actually made a lot of headlines recently, Star Fox Armada. It was going to feature puppet visuals, online multiplayer, invasions, and all kinds of brand new content and ideas for the Star Fox franchise. As the story goes, one of the employees for Retro Studios actually created a 12-page document that was going to be a pitch for Star Fox Armada. However, the leadership of Retro Studios quickly passed on this pitch, and it never even got to Nintendo. It was going to be taking place after Star Fox 64, while also seeing you going to other planetary systems. Eventually, the Star Fox team was actually going to encounter a threat far more imposing than Andros himself, and it intended to combine the classic Star Fox 64 controls with a new open world and multiplayer mechanics. You could play online with friends, there was a battle mode, Star Fox Armada was really going to change the game for Star Fox. But we may never see what Star Fox Armada could have been like if ever given the time to be developed, at least us fans get to have the knowledge that there's at least some people in the gaming industry that still have a passion for Star Fox, and there are people out there that want to create brand new Star Fox experiences. Alright. Now this one is technically a bit of a cop-out, but I felt like I had to put it in here. Star Fox Grand Prix. Okay, 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 before you start getting mad at me in the comments typing away like crazy banshees, I know Star Fox Grand Prix was technically never a real game. If you guys don't know, several years ago there was a leak of a game called Star Fox Grand Prix, a racing title for Star Fox that was leaked from Retro Studios. Now, a lot of fans were actually skeptical of Grand Prix, but we were all still equally as excited to see what Grand Prix could bring to the table since the last thing we got to see for Star Fox was Star Fox Zero and back in 2016. Now, it was eventually revealed that Star Fox Grand Prix was done as a fake leak by Nintendo of America to uncover employees that were, you know, well, leaking information. The truth of the matter is, is that Retro Studios was working on something, but it was actually their own action IP, which also got cancelled, and now they're working on Metric Prime 4. However, I don't entirely think that Star Fox Grand Prix was entirely false. Now, around the same time where Star Fox Grand Prix was being rumored, we had another game that was already out and about called Starling Battle for Atlas, or as I like to call it, Star Fox Battle for Atlas. Starling Battle for Atlas on Nintendo Switch actually had the Star Fox team make a major appearance, and it honestly kind of made it feel like its own entire game. 
all based around Star Fox. In fact, later down the road, there was an entire Star Fox DLC created specifically for Starlink on Nintendo Switch. And what's really interesting is that this DLC not only included brand new playable characters like Slippy Toad, Falcon Lombardi, and Peppy Hare, but it also featured a brand new racing mode. It's been speculated that Star Fox Grand Prix was actually an idea conjured up based off of the racing mode being developed for Starlink Battle for Atlas. And for all intents and purposes, the racing section in Starlink Battle for Atlas is as close to Star Fox Grand Prix as we'll ever get. Though Star Fox Grand Prix might not have been real, it's still a shame that we never got a racing game for Star Fox, as there really aren't that many spin-offs for the Star Fox franchise, and a racing game just seems right up its alley. Alright, now we're starting it into the weird stuff. Star Fox for Virtual Boy. Star Fox Virtual Boy was revealed in 1995, while Star Fox 2 was actually still being developed. There is very little information, and it's unknown if it would have actually been a port or an entirely new game. The only thing we really do know is that Star Fox Virtual Boy was revealed in the Winter CES show in 1995. The game did look similar to SNES Star Fox, except it was in 3D and had that generic vomit-inducing red and black graphics of the Virtual Boy. The game was inevitably cancelled, mainly because the Virtual Boy was an absolute commercial failure. Now, we don't actually get to see much of Star Fox Virtual Boy. In fact, besides of a few screenshots and only one video on the entire internet that actually shows gameplay of this thing, we know next to nothing about this title. However, that's not where the story actually ends. Though yes, it's highly unlikely we'll never get to see what Nintendo's version of Star Fox on Virtual Boy would have been like, we luckily have fans to fill in a few of the gaps. There's a little website called Planet Virtual Boy, and on there is a developer known as Greg. Greg actually released a Star Fox Virtual Boy demo back in 2014 team and almost nobody has ever seen it or even talked about it. I accidentally stumbled across this along my research, and all the gameplay you've been seeing on screen, aside from the beta footage I've been showing you, is actually from this demo. The demo is very bare bones and extremely short, but it does give us a glimpse into what Star Fox on Virtual Boy could have been like if it was fully realized and actually did get a release or at least a chance on Virtual Boy. The next game I want to talk about is one that has next to nothing about it aside from one screenshot. The game in question? Star Fox Arcade. Star Wars Arcade was originally announced alongside of Star Fox Assault, and this game was actually being developed for the Triforce Arcade system board. Now, the Triforce Arcade system itself was actually a joint project created by Nintendo, Namco, and Sega. This arcade board was actually based off the original architecture of the GameCube, and saw not a lot, but a handful of games. Now, the Triforce Arcade system wasn't that successful commercially, and its library was pretty small, but Star Fox was originally planned to be a part of that system's library. Now, we'll probably never know what Star Fox Arcade will ever look like, as Nintendo has been absolutely dead silent about this project for, well, years since its original announcement. All we have to go off is this poster, which shows a brand new modeled R-Wing, which seems to be a combination between the Star Fox 64 R-Wing and the Star Fox Adventure R-Wing. It also features a completely unique icon for Fox McCloud, with the title Star Fox at the very top. Now, Star Fox Arcade actually does have a lot of connection with the beta and original development of Star Fox Assault. You see, another game on the GameCube, known as F-Zero GX, also had an arcade release known as F-Zero AX. Both titles looked fairly similar, but there were key differences between both the home system release and the arcade system release. And this is going to be the same case for Star Fox Assault and its arcade version. Most likely, Star Fox Arcade would have emphasized the multiplayer mode that's found in Star Fox Assault. And you really don't have to look that hard for any evidence of this, as Star Fox Assault's multiplayer is not only extremely in-depth, but has tons of unlockables, stages, weapons, and alternative vehicles at the player's disposal. With Star Fox Assault having such an in-depth multiplayer, it's very likely that this was going to be the main focus of Star Fox Arcade, where players could either co-op on missions or fight against each other in a versus mode. But that's all we actually know. Honestly though, it would have been so cool to see an actual Star Fox Arcade in arcades. At least for me. As a Star Fox fan, that would have been the coolest thing to see in the world. And yes, we might not get any additional information aside from this one poster, but at least we have Star Fox Assault's amazing multiplayer to keep us company. Now, this one's gonna be a little weird to talk about because technically I'm talking about a beta of Star Fox Assault. It's called Star Fox 2 for GameCube. Star Fox Assault had a very odd development history, 
And there were actually three working titles for this game. Star Fox Armada, <laughs> Star Fox 2, and just Star Fox. All three of these titles were being used for Star Fox Assault's beta version. But here's the thing though, Star Fox Assault's beta version, the game on its own right, is extremely different than what we actually got. You see, Star Fox 2 GC, or GameCube Edition, which is what I'll be calling it for the remainder of this section for the sake of narration, was going to be far more multiplayer oriented, and it was rumored to have a lane mode as well. The idea was that multiple players work together on combat missions, while facing off against a new threat, which inevitably became the Aperoids. In fact, that was a big draw of Star Fox 2 GC, a co-op adventure mode. Now, another thing of note is that Star Fox 2 GC was also having an arcade version being created, which is what we talked about previously, that being Star Fox Arcade, which we all know what happened there. Now, another interesting thing about Star Fox 2 GC is that the multiplayer aspect was going to be somewhat similar to Mario Kart Double Dash, where two players are going to work together on vehicles. For example, one character would be flying or operating a Landmaster, while another character could ride along to help defend it. This kind of gameplay can actually still be seen in the final version of Star Fox Assault, where Fox McCloud has to ride the wing of one of the R-Wings and defend it from enemy fire. All in all, though this might have been just a beta of Star Fox Assault, the game was going to be so different from what we got, where multiplayer was the centric focus and online was going to be a massive part of it. Though I love Star Fox Assault, it just makes complete and total sense to have a Star Fox game that was entirely co-op or multiplayer centric. And yeah, you could be mad at me or call me a liar or say I'm baiting by calling this a cancel Star Fox game, but I honestly feel like that Star Fox 2 GC has enough differences to kind of count as its own experience versus what we actually did get via Star Fox Assault. Alright, we're finally getting towards the end of this list, and it's finally time we talk about one of the more weirder examples of a canceled Star Fox game, Star Fox 3D. Star Fox 3D was going to be the game that Kid Icarus Uprising became. Yeah, that's that's a sentence. I, I shit you not, it's, it's weird. Kid Icarus Uprising was a game developed for the Nintendo 3DS, and it was pretty much a massive shoot 'em up You've got your witty banter from different characters, you've got massive fights. I mean, the whole shebang really feels and looks like it could be a Star Fox game. And funny enough, it originally was going to be. The big man behind this game was Sakurai, and he had two choices, Star Fox or Kid Icarus. He chose Kid Icarus because apparently it was too hard to incorporate Star Fox because of the different viewpoints that the game showcased during its flighting and shooting segments, which is, um, which is really stupid. Now, the biggest reason why this excuse is so freaking stupid is because Star Fox Zero introduced an idea called Gimbal Cannons. Effectively, the Wii U gamepad was its own independent aiming reticle, so you could aim and fire independent from the direction your ship was flying. With that being said, it really would have been that hard to install some kind of turret or showcase the Star Fox team installing a new type of weapon that could drop down from below the R-Wing that could be a cannon that could, that could fire independently from the ship, which could totally solve the whole different perspectives of Star Fox. Now, don't get me wrong, Kid Icarus is definitely another one of those IPs that deserves his time in the spotlight because, again, he is another IP that has just been forgotten and thrown aside by Nintendo. However, I can still be upset at the fact that the 3DS never got its own true blue Star Fox game. And the only thing we have is a remake from Star Fox 64. A good one, mind you, but it's still just a remake and not an original project. Hopefully one day, Nintendo will get off their high horse, or another developer will come along and pick up the Star Fox IP to create new experiences and push the envelope for the series. But only time will tell. Alright, the final game in the list. The game in question? Star Fox Wii Battle for Corneria. Now before you click off this video and call me a liar, I do have evidence that supports the idea of Star Fox Wii being a real thing. Star Fox Wii was a speculative project name for the cancelled Star Fox game installment on the Wii console. Now, Shigeru Miyamoto did have some genuine interest in creating a Star Fox game for the Wii console, and even Takia Umura also had some ideas of a sequel to Star Fox Command. Now, around this time, there were lots of rumors and supposed fake leaks all around this game, Star Fox Battle for Corneria. However, there was never anything concrete. But my evidence to support this claim comes from a very unlikely source. Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Super Smash Bros. If you don't know what it is, it's effectively a mass fighting game with tons of IPs from Nintendo and other gaming franchises. It has seen tons of releases from the N64 all the way up to the Nintendo Switch. Now, I want you to follow me on this. In Smash 64, Fox McCloud represented his 64 model. In Smash Melee, it showed a more modernized, up look of the original 64 models. In Super Smash Bros. 4 slash 3DS, Fox McCloud retained a more modernized, updated look to his N64 model. 
model. However, the R-Wings were representative, with Star Fox 64 3D's R-Wing model being in the 3DS version of Super Smash Bros, and the Star Fox Assault R-Wing being represented in Super Smash Bros. 4. In Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Fox and Falco and the R-Wings all looked more akin to their Star Fox Zero counterparts. As you can see, every Smash game represented the Star Fox brand in the most up-to-date form. But now let's apply that logic to Smash Bros. Brawl. In Smash Brawl, we had an entirely unique R-Wing model. Alongside this, Brawl had a brand new Star Fox level called Lilac Cruise. However, what's interesting is that they use all the most up-to-date character portraits from Assault, but they're using all these brand new ship models. But I find it very unlikely that they went out of their way to create brand new ship models specifically for this one stage instead of reusing the Assault models that they already had at their disposal, which they ended up doing anyways in a future Smash Brothers title. To me, it makes far more sense if these were actually leftover assets Sets from a possible Star Fox Wii game that never saw the light of day, and that these models are the only link that we actually have to Star Fox Wii. Now, yes, you can poke holes in this theory. For example, the R-Wing very well could have been made for the CGI cutscenes in the Space Emissary mode. And it's possible that the Assault R-Wings just wouldn't work with the Fox McCloud model that was in Brawl, and that's why they had to make a new ship. Now, I would like to speculate a little bit on what Battle for Corneria could have been, specifically by focusing on its name, Battle for Corneria. When really focusing on the title of this game, it sounds oddly familiar to the premise of Star Fox 2, where you had to defend a central point, in that game it was Corneria, from tons of different enemies while trying to go and save other planets. Battle for Corneria might have been an updated, modernized take on Star Fox 2 that was going to be repurposed as a sequel to Star Fox Command, which would make a lot of sense as Star Fox Command was more of a strategic style game, and Battle of Corneria could have emphasized that type of gameplay style and better refined it by choosing alternative ships, maybe building up your own squad while defending Corneria from some kind of central enemy force that was trying to come and occupy slash take over Corneria. All while pushing the narrative of the massive arc continuing from Assault and maybe even cleaning up the absolute dumpster fire that was the story of Starbucks Command. We might never know, but one can only hope. And that finally brings us to the end of this list. Though you might not agree with every single one of these being a true blue canceled game, you can't deny that Star Fox does have a pretty rad history when it comes to canceled projects and lost ideas to time. Now for all those that are interested in reading more about these projects or learning more information that I didn't go into here, all of my references and links to the site, interviews, and more are all linked down in the description as well as that really cool Star Fox Virtual Boy demo that I showcased today. It's honestly a shame that a lot of these never got to see the light of day, but at least we have their history preserved, and maybe Nintendo will actually go back to one of these cancelled projects and ideas and use it to create a brand new Star Fox game. Wishful thinking I know, but hey, a Star Fox fan can dream. Thank you for joining me for this list of the cancelled Star Fox games, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Without further ado, Jarsic signing out, don't forget to rock and roll.